Hey guys, Chris Six here with you, UT Extension in Smith County. We are in some cool season plots that we planted on September 20th with some help from NRCS. Our plan was to have a field day, but with COVID-19, that's not going to happen. But we still wanted to give you the opportunity to look at some of these forage plots and these cover crop plots so that you can, can see what, uh, what you might have had had you planted on September 20th, uh, what, what these look like today here at the end of March. So we started with the wheat right over here on the edge and, and wheat of course is a cool season grain, uh, fairly inexpensive, it was actually the most inexpensive option that we had in our plot. It uh, does really well if you mix it with a legume, we'll see that a little bit later in the plot. Uh, so it's a pretty common cool season annual species that we have here in Tennessee and uh, it's really important to think about cool season annuals like wheat because it's, it's so much more inexpensive to graze these cool season annuals than it is to uh, harvest hay. With We, we know the, the equipment cost of, of hay are, are very expensive and uh, the storage cost and the feeding loss and, and all the waste that we have in hay production, it's much more economical to let your animals do the harvesting than it is for you as a producer to do the harvesting. Uh, we did some figures and, and I think hay production for a 1,200 pound, 1200 pound cow is going to be about $1.34 per acre, whereas these cool season annuals on average, there'll be some variation, but on average they'll cost you a, a 50 to 55 cents per acre uh, per day, or per, per animal per day rather, 50 to 55 cents per animal per day. So it's a lot more economical, as we said, to let the animals do the harvesting rather than you. Now the second plot we have here is rye. Rye is another cool season grain. Rye is going to give you a little bit quicker jump, maybe than some other cool season annuals we'll talk about. In fact, if you got this out early enough, this rye, you might get some fall grazing out of it. In four to six weeks, you should be able to graze that, uh, but make sure you've got your fertility where it needs to be. And that's one of the things that we would emphasize is getting a soil test, going through your local extension office to, to help you develop a fertility plan that will allow you to get the maximum benefit from these cool season annuals. Now the third species that we have here was uh, oats, and oats are a viable option, but uh, they, they, we had a winter kill problem here. Oats are the least winter hardy of the cool season species we'll talk about today, and we did see that. We saw some winter kill, so for those of you that are looking to plant something uh, in the spring, early spring, maybe for, for some forage in, in April and May, oats are a good option and uh, might, might do a little bit better planted in the spring than in the fall. Now where I'm standing is, is sort of our check. This, this ground was in corn production last year, so this is just corn stubble that we left. And one thing you notice is there are a lot more weeds. I see thistle, I see henbit, uh, I see a buckhorn plant, and I see all kinds of weeds here that I don't necessarily see in some of the other plots that we'll look at where we got good coverage. Uh, we always say the best weed control is the healthy stand of grass, and that's certainly true in this case. We have a lot more weeds in the area that uh, we didn't have uh, any, any cover. So as we move along in the plots here and look at a couple more species, uh, we've got barley to uh, my right, uh, did really well. And so if I put my grazing stick here, it's at about 24 inches and it needs grazing today. Uh, the animals need to be on here because they would really like this. And uh, you think about what your tall fescue pastures look like at the end of March. They probably don't look like this. And, and so if you planted this in September, uh, boy, those animals would like that, especially if you had some calves and you were trying to put, a, put some weight on those animals, uh, something like this would really do it. Now a downside to this barley, it's probably our most expensive option as far as the ones that we talked about today. Uh, the ones that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about today, it was the most expensive, but it, uh, it really showed out and, and got a nice stand. Now, what I'm standing in here is the triticale. Triticale is, is a cross, it's a hybrid between wheat and rye, uh, commonly used for haylage production, but also can, can be grazed very well. And uh, it's about 26, 28 inches high, so it's, it's also at a stage where we really need to, to do something uh, with it, have animals on here grazing these species.
Now, the plot we're looking at here is, uh, we've actually got two plots here, and I don't know that you can tell, but we've actually got ryegrass, followed by the closest to me is ryegrass mixed with crimson clover. The ryegrass rye kind of overtook the crimson clover, but there is some clover there, and of course, adding that clover gives you the, the benefits of, of increased protein levels, the increased quality, palatability, also some nitrogen fixation. But ryegrass is one of the more common cool season annuals that we use and uh, it's really easy to get a stand of ryegrass. I, I, I sometimes say that you could throw ryegrass out on concrete and it would germinate, which may not be true, but uh, we, we got a really good stand of ryegrass here. And uh, one thing I'll mention, when we planted this plot, September 20th again is when we planted this, it was, it was bone dry in September and the weeks leading up to when we planted and the weeks following when we planted. There was no soil moisture in the ground and, and we kind of worried, would it germinate, would it do well? Well, as you can see, it did. Once soil moisture came, uh, it, it's, it germinated and did quite well. And if, if we come in and added a spring nitrogen application, we would have really seen an outstanding uh, stand of ryegrass. As it is, it, it's still very nice. Uh, we did fertilize in the fall with, with nitrogen and potash according to UT soil test recommendations. Now to my left, we have a, a mix of crimson clover and wheat. It's a very common mixture that we see in, in cover crops but also in, in forage production from a haylage standpoint, from a grazing standpoint. Again, you get some really nice benefits from adding that clover. We also did a, a plot just, just to see what it would look like of just crimson clover. And uh, we got an okay stand of, of crimson clover, but typically you would mix that with grass. You typically wouldn't just plant crimson clover by itself or any legume necessarily by itself. Uh, you, you typically mix that with grass for grazing purposes. We mentioned that we partnered with our friends at NRCS to plant these plots back in September. And one of the things that NRCS works with is, is cover crops. And it's really important, as we saw from where we didn't have a cover crop and we just had corn stubble, boy, we have a, a really high weed pressure. And, and also having a cover crop gives us some benefits from microbial activity and just improves overall soil health. So we had a couple of, of plots with, with cover crops, including these radishes that really uh, are supposed to work at, at improving the tilth of the soil and improving the overall uh, beneficial organisms that are in the soil. It really improves, as we said, the, the soil health. And so we did a couple of plots and I would encourage uh, row crop producers, if you are able to graze some of those cover crops, uh, do so, consider that. Consider putting some poly wire up, some temporary fencing up and grazing those because uh, we can have a really nice stand of cover crops and boy, it's a shame to let, let that go away, go to waste if we could get some grazing benefit from that. And we appreciate you joining us today as we talked about some of these uh, cover crops and some of these uh, winter, winter annuals, these cool season annuals. Uh, stay tuned for more information and more videos uh, covering forage production. But again, keep in mind that uh, no matter which of these cool season annuals you plant, you can find more information about them at your local UT Extension office and uh, messages on Facebook or on one of our social media sites and, and we'll be glad to help you if we can.